Friends of Gravity, I actually managed to 3D copy this Hubelino brick and which problems I encountered during this journey and which problems I still have to solve. This I will talk about in today's video. <music> I still owe you guys a video on my efforts to 3D copy to replicate this Hubelino brick using the Revopoint Pop 3D scanner. I played around with this a little bit, I tried several things and this is the result. I think you must admit at first glance this looks like a success and it even works. You can put those two together and they fit, it's a fit. This is a real Hubelino building block, it works, the size is very convincing, so I just 3D scanned this thing and exported it and out came this, and I must say, this is quite impressive. Problem is, it only managed to scan this side. You see the studs here, they are, not, uh, they are not solid, they just have this exterior wall and then the inner area here, uh, the inner segments, they are, they are free. This is just little tubes basically and uh, I wasn't able to, to properly scan this. You see it worked a little bit here but for the other studs here they are solid or they have these artifacts here so that didn't really work. This of course spells big trouble for the backside of the Hubelino brick because there's quite a complex concave structure here and I wasn't able to properly scan this or to properly replicate this and I'm going to show you why in a minute. In the comments some of you asked about the accuracy. So let's talk about the accuracy. So these studs measure at 9.3 at the original Hubelino block and for the copy that comes out as a 9.3 and 9.3 again. So this is quite precise. So this is the accuracy must be around the tenth of a millimeter and also the whole size of the block the original comes in at 3.17 and my copy measures at 3.19 for this side and 3.18 on the other side. So accuracy is not a problem. This is quite accurate. The problem really is how to scan these kinds of structures. Actually, another user pointed me to the marker mode. So when I tried this last time, inside the RevoPoint software, every time you start a scan, you have to select a mode you scan in. And there are several, and I last time I always used feature mode. That is the mode where you put an object on that turntable and every time you change the orientation, the software automatically adjusts and try to uh, turn around the point cloud so it matches the object on the turntable. If you use marker mode, the scanner software doesn't try to so much understand the object, it will use the markers on the turntable for orientation. So that means you cannot turn around the scanned object, but it won't lose orientation so easily. So I was actually able to create good scans of this, but I couldn't change the orientation within one scan. So I had to export every single orientation as a single scan and then try to fuse those in a different software. In addition to using the marker mode, I also used this 3D scanning spray to remove all glares on this thing. And this costs like 15 euros and I'm kind of underwhelmed by this. It's kind of a spray on powder, but it doesn't stick very well. So this created like this left little powder stains everywhere. Looks like I was using cocaine on this thing. A little bit messy affair. There is these, um, you can buy wash out hairspray in Germany in different colors for like uh, Halloween. You, if you want to be a vampire and you want white hair, you can, there's like 
wash out white hairspray and I think if you would apply that that would do the same trick and be much less messy. But I sprayed it on and it might have helped because it does reduce some glare. So here you see using the markers the software has a better orientation where the model is and how it moves. So this actually works. The scanner does not lose track of the model like it does in the feature mode. This actually helps the scanner to always stay on track and the newly scanned points always go exactly where they should inside the point cloud. This works actually quite well, not just this way, but also in the other orientation. Even at this orientation, using the marker mode, this works quite well and this actually creates quite a convincing point cloud inside this software. So the marker mode is really the way to go here with this kind of object. For the scanning part of the whole operation, I just didn't know that before and I'm very happy I learned this now. I'm going to complete this to a fused point cloud. So you see for the most part this created a very convincing point cloud here. The outer structure here I think looks very well. You see those little elements here. But what's not convincing at all is the round middle part. That is not even there. So there are certainly still problems when scanning in this mode. There were some more problems you will see when I try to merge those different scans together. <music> So that's when you have to open a different piece of software that's called Handy Studio. And inside this second piece of software, you can combine different individual scans to one unified point cloud and export it as a 3D model. So you tell the software to put the two point clouds on top of each other. And in this case, this worked reasonably well. But there was one point where I failed every single time. So I'm looking for a reasonably well scanned lower part of the brick. This is what this looks like. This is an upper part of the brick and this is a lower part of the brick that I scanned. And looking at each scan individually, this looks okay. Trouble is, I just failed to put them together. When I try to do this, this is what came out. You get those twisted and destroyed shapes because the software wouldn't fit the two parts together and especially it wouldn't get how to fit them together. And believe me, I tried many times. There is even a function here called marker align where you can define different markers on each scan and the software will try to align the two scans by matching the positions of the markers you set. Sounds very convincing but it did not work. And that was ultimately the reason why I decided to only take the upper part of the Hubelino brick and print that out because I just couldn't get that bottom structure of the brick in here. If you guys have any idea how to overcome this, how to connect the upper and lower parts of the scan into one working model, please let me know in the comments. Here you see what happens. The green structure and the red structure, these represent my two scans and they should be aligning in a way that if I add more and more scans to this, they would slowly form a complete brick that I could then export as a full model. I could not get it to work. So I ended up only merging my scans of this here, the upper side, exporting it as an STL and printing it out on my Creality CR6 printer and this is the result. So I came across a discussion online where people suspect the problem might be that the turntable is rotating too fast for this rather slow sluggish software to keep up. So people are modding the turntable to slow it down. I feel that this is a promising way forward. So I will try to get a slower turntable or find a way to slow this one down. As soon as I will have any results trying that I will make another video and post it on this channel.
This was my really short update on my efforts to 3D copy to replicate this Hubelino brick using that Revopoint Pop 3D scanner. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. And please remember, what goes up must come down here at Gravity Bytes.